Hello everyone, it's Mark here, and today I'm going to show you how to make these amazing beaded beads using lentil beads. Now lentil beads, if I show you some of these here, are part of the Checkmates range, and they are six millimeter across, and as you can see, they are double drilled, top to bottom, so not side to side, top to bottom, and each of them are these tiny little saucer discs. They are very, very cute. They come in a wide range of colours and for this technique I'm going to show you how to do the, the beady beads. Now for each bead you will need 10 of your lentils and an 11-0 seed bead. If you want to embellish, which I'll show you at the end of the demonstration, you will also need some little 15 O's. And then to decorate your pieces, to turn them into your jewellery, you will need some sort of accent bead. So, as you all know, I'm a massive fan of shell pearl. So, again, I've incorporated the 6mm shell pearl in this necklace, alongside a clasp of your choice. And if you can see these earrings here, I've incorporated them using some Swarovskis. Again, one of my firm favourites. So I'm going to show you how to make this amazing beaded bead. As I said, just 10 lentils. You can either use one colour, as I've done on the earrings, or two colours to get a top and bottom mix. Okay, so let's get started. So what you're going to need, you're going to need either one or two colours of your lentil beads. Your 11 O's, which I've gone for this gold your accent beads, the shell pearl, and then if you're making earrings, you will need your shepherd's hooks and your head pins. If you're going to make a necklace, you will need thread and a clasp. So the thread I'm going to be using is this Fireline. This is white, uh, 10 pound thickness, and I'm using a size 12 tulip needle, which is my go-to needle of choice at the moment. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to decide on our top and our bottom. So I'm going to go for the red to start. And it's always best when you've got, um, when you have double drilled or triple drilled or quadruple drilled beads, it's always best just before your product, just to check that all of the holes are fully open during the manufacturing process, and these are. So what we're going to do is we're going to first of all pick up an 11-0, followed by a lentil bead five times. So one, two, three, Now you can do this with seven beads. What you can't do is you can't do this technique with an even number. It has to be an odd number. So five is quite a nice number to use. So I've got five of my 11 O's and I've got five of my lentils. I'm going to slide it down and leave a tail of a couple of inches because you're going to be tying it off. It's not going to be used. And we're going to simply tie an overhand knot, just a simple overhand knot, which will bring the little star shape together and then pull nice and tight. And then what I tend to do then is I do a double knot. So a single followed by a double, and that's a really nice secure way of starting your project. So that is now nice and tight. So you can see now that my positioning is in between the lentil and the 11. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle to get away from the knot through the first 11 and through the first lentil. As I said, this tail will be coming off at the end of the project. Now, as you can see, I'm exiting through the interior of the two holes, so the inside hole. I'm going to do what's called a thread bridge into the exterior hole. So I'm just going to take my needle across and down into that outside hole. So you can just see the thread. So always bear in mind the thread colour when you're making these projects, whether you want it to stand out or whether you want it to, to disappear into the project. And I like to work anti-clockwise, so I'm flipping my project over. And what I'm going to do is there are now five gaps in between these petals. I'm going to fill these gaps with the following. 111, my second lentil colour, which I've gone for this amazing turquoise blue, and an 11. So 11 lentil 11. I'm going to take a needle across the gap and I'm going to fill it with those beads. So I'm going to repeat that all the way around. So 11, lentil, 11. Skip the gap into the next. So these beaded beads are a really nice little project if you've got odds and ends of tubes 
left over. And you can do this with any shape or size of a double drilled bead. So it's it's a really neat little technique. So one 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 across turn my project and eleven lentil eleven bridge the gap to the outside. I'm just going to turn it and then fill the last gap. So 11 lentil 11. Now, as you can see, this was our original thread bridge just here. So I'm going to take my needle through the gap, through the lentil, through the 11, and through the lentil. So we're going to do another thread bridge. We're going to do another step up. So I've gone through the outside red hole, through the 11, and into the interior of the blue lentil. Okay, so I'm going to, now going to pull that nice and tight, so that you can see we've got our flower shape forming. I'm going to do again a thread bridge from the interior hole on the turquoise to the exterior. And again, I like working away from me, so I'm going to flip that over. Now, can you see now we've got quite a big gap in between our turquoise petals? And we're going to fill this gap with one 11 which you may think that's going to be quite a lot of thread that's going to be left visible. So we're just going to go across the gap. As you can see, there's a lot of thread showing at this precise moment, but don't worry about that. 111.0, bridge the gap into the turquoise. I'm going to turn, fill the gap into the turquoise. Turn it round. Fill the gap with the turquoise. And then the last. I'm going to pop that through. Okay, so we've gone all the way around and we've filled in all of those gaps with our 11 0. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move that out of the way, I'm going to lay it down flat. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut this tail off now because I don't I don't need that. And then what we're going to do then, this is where the magic happens, is all we're going to do is we're going to pop our finger into the interior where the red lentils are and we're just going to pull nice and tight and can you see now it's concertinaed it's all up together so we have a red side and we have a blue side so all we're going to do now is we're just going to strengthen this so we're just going to sew all the way around what i tend to do when i'm doing these beaded beads at home is i i literally go round and round and round until I can't get the needle, whoops, until I can't get the needle through anymore. And then I don't have to tie a knot. I know that it is very, very secure. So I'm just going to go round and round, pulling nice and tight. So all the way around. If you don't want to, um, at this point, continue going round, if I show you how we, how we tie off. So as you can see at the moment, I'm exiting through this 11 I'm going to take my needle through the gap behind and up through the middle. So I've gone round the back, underneath and through. And I'm going to pull my thread till I have a loop about the size of a, of a small grape. And I'm going to take my needle from the top down and pull it through, top down, and pull it through. So then when I pull nice and tight, the knot disappears and then I need to just take my needle away from that knot before I cut it, just to add a little bit extra security. So that's the beaded bead. If you wanted to, as I mentioned at the beginning of the introduction, if you wanted to Add a little extra. What I've done here is, can you see the 11 O's that I've got around the outside? What I've done is I've threaded in between those 11s, I've taken three 15s. So I've threaded, so I've exited through the 11, added 15, I've gone across the top of the lentil, through the 11, next 15, next 15, next 15. And then what I've done is I've stepped up to the middle of one of those groups of three 15 O's, and I've done exactly what I've just done with those 11s on the beaded bead. And I've, I've picked up the 
five middle beads of those groups of three 15 O's and I've just taken it round and round and round. And what will happen is these groups of three will pop up into the centre to get this really nice star design. If you're making a necklace, that's probably a really nice thing to do because it just adds a bit of decorativeness either side of your beaded bead. So back to our bead that we're making here. We've gone round, we've now knotted it, so we're now safe to cut our thread, like so and pop that to one side. So to make it into the earring, what I've got, I've, I've got some, some gold-plated head pins. So again, I've taken some of my beloved shell pearl, which I'm going to use as a decorative feature. So I'm going to pop on a 11 -0, and I'm going to pop on one of my shell pearls. Then I'm going to pop on my beaded bead. It's up to you which side you have as your upper and lower. And what happens is because you've got a shell pearl either side, that adds as a little stopper, which makes it sit nice and neatly and central. Then I'm going to pop on one, 11, another shell pearl, and then one more, 11, And I'm going to cut off my wire. So leave about a centimetre, like so. And then what we're going to do is using our round nose pliers, we're going to make a little loop. So I'm just going to take my round nose pliers, I'm going to fold the wire away from me, 90 degrees. I'm going to turn it back just to make a little loop at the top of my earring and I'm going to take one of my shepherd's hooks, give the tail a little flick out, open a little door, pop on our earring and then close it nice and neatly. So it's a really beautiful elegant little earring and you can use that on the on the, uh, the bottom of a, a long chain if you wanted a pendant but as earrings or as I've shown you earlier you can make this exquisite little necklace and as I said each bead uses 10 lentils or 10 any other uh, double drilled beads that you have in your stash and uh, yeah just just make lots and lots of them and, and uh, put them to one side and then decide on your, your type of project that you want to turn them into but uh, they're great fun and they're a really nice way of starting to get used to your double drilled seed beads. So I hope you enjoyed that and look forward to seeing some of your makes and I'll um, see you again soon. Bye!